Why this backlash for update 237? If we ignore the broken matchmaking and the bug with the social hub feature that corrupts save files, yeah, I can ignore that. It's been four weeks. But I think the but I think the backlash isn't something that is entirely you entirely update to 3.7's fault. It is more of a snowball effect. Years of neglect to the game's health, its systems, combined with the multiple breaches of trust from Star Wars' part, is the reason why many people outright quit the game. In order to give more context to what I mean by this snowball effect, let's take a look at the history of Star Wars' multiple blunders. For the next chapters, I want you to imagine that you have been playing the game for years, or think of it as a story time moment. I will be bringing up past drama to give more context to this snowballing effect, since those past dramas never properly addressed, which adds to the pile. One of the first blunders was Crimefest 2015. Star Wars outright told player base that there won't be any microtransactions and then edit them anyway. This was the first time they betrayed the community's trust for nothing more than monetary gain, on a game that was already making bank with, bank with all the DLCs for <clears throat> Payday 2, mind you, said microtransactions, God, don't expect us to put that into the game, you, you shameful for you to even think about it, you know? Well, guess what, they did it, you know, that's, you know, not shameful at all, motherfucker, we, we knew this. So Payday 2 went through all those trials and tribulations and he Do you know who Jules is? Jules was the lead game designer after the original designer, David Goldfarb, left the company. As evidenced by One Down, Death Sentence, Power Creep DLCs, and spending most of his time on Reddit and Twitter, he is incompetent. I will get to gameplay related changes a bit later because I want to give you information you probably didn't have thought about until this point. Jules got to the position because his relative, Emmanuel Marquez, was a higher up in Starbreeze. Using shitty company politics, Jules was promoted to a spot he didn't deserve. Emmanuel Marquez joined Starries when company CEO, Bo Anderson, bought Star VR. Yes, I will get to that, but first I want to focus on Jules and his time at the company. Jules absolutely ravaged the game, its balance, design and insistence with the assuring competence. First everything buffed to levels unheard of in any game to the point that the highest difficulty at the time, Deathwish, wasn't even remotely challenging. Now imagine being a competent game designer, what would you do? Would you slowly nerf and scale the player side balance back, or would you add a new difficulty? Jules added one down, which was a technical design and balancing nightmare. On the technical side, Zs were set up incorrectly, and they loaded up on top of regular units, clogging up the game's memory and reducing the frame rates on the highest difficulty. On the design side, enemy health was so high that it gradually always made you deal more damage than your guns were able to. And on the balance side, on release, the vast majority of the weapon arsenal physically couldn't keep up with the enemy health pools, and while that was somewhat addressed a week later, the enemy damage is still at an absolute level to this day. It was also the same update that removed hostage rescue teams from the game, it was the same update that removed shotgunner spawn groups because of a stupid code oversight which they still haven't fixed after 7 years, it was the same update that broke majority of the enemy chatter, it was the same update that broke enemy weapon presets forcing them to never use full auto fire. Do I need to go on? One down was a mistake. These are not my words. This quote is ushered in by an old developer, Overkill Jokin. You may know him from the Kimpin Project Spotlight. He does the voice of that one. A roaming, madness of a ch He's no longer credited under the description because he left the company. And they removed his name like it's nothing. But I have a feeling that the name is gone because he admitted the dev team's mistake. Billion Power Crypt DLC and a year later, Juice with his infinite wisdom, decided to solve one down's issues with a brand new difficulty called Death Sentence. Death Sentence took one down's issues and uh, only amplify them. It is riddled with technical, design and balance issues, all of which still exist in the game today. Technical side, anime AI is simplified improperly. Before Death Sentence introduction, there were special spawn groups called Reinforced Groups. Reinforced Group's job was to protect certain areas around the map set up by the developers to prevent players from wandering off to areas they shouldn't. That's called area denial. Those were completely removed, so that levels were less cluttered by enemies. And in the same update, Jules also raised the spawn cap even higher. All of this sounds stupid, doesn't it? And you know why this was done? Instead of fixing an issue with objective code which made AI get stuck sometimes, he just forced every enemy on the map to change their objective area to the one that has players in it. Enemies are now moving to the players while being in their spawn objective. 
which has them crouched. Crouching enemies move awfully slow, so now they're even worse at catching up with players. And to fix that issue, Jules just cranks up the enemy count to insanity. Yeah. With this amount of enemies, you're gonna have frame rate issues if they're all responsive. How did they solve this frame rate issue? They limited AI to a refresh rate of 60 tasks per second. Since there are now 108 cops, all trying to pathfind, determine if they're aggroed or not, determine if they've taken damage, all at the same time with the hard 60 tasks throughput limit in place, they just get stuck in thin air, unable to do anything of value. All of that's on top of bugs like AI rolling their accuracy calculations twice, which is actually the only reason minigun doses can even hit players in the first place. Intentional shit design like giving cops zero aim delay so their animations can physically catch up to whoever they're shooting, especially a with OMG dozers. All blended with AI code that was meant for pay to the heist means Tell Sentence is a technical shit show. That's on top of terrible balancing of players' toolkits and power creep TLCs, which are issues that are still persistent to this day. Jules left Starbreeze in 2018, but you know what else happened, to the co happened with the company between 2014 and 2019? The CEO, Bo Anderson, was thinking pretty highly of himself. He bought Star VR, a new engine that was VR capable called Valhalla, offices in expensive places, and so on. I want you to remember, all of these expensive ventures were powered by Payday 2 and its DLCs. Ask any businessman. Making risky moves with just a single product under your, under your belt is a stupid idea. Bo might be stupid, but he's not that stupid, so he tried to branch out with Raid World War 2 and Overkill's The Walking Dead alongside some other publishing deals. Raid World War 2 was developed by their subsidiary, Lion Game Lion, while Overkill's The Walking Dead was developed in-house by the Star, Star Wars staff. Raid World War 2 at launch had a ton of technical problems. LGL turned the game around after they escaped the Starbreeze's clutches, and I will cover it in a separate video. But at launch, rate flopped, so Bo sold some of the company's stuff to recover the loss. Orchis The Walking Dead was another failure, and it is entirely because of mismanagement. You may remember me mentioning Valhalla Engine. According to an unnamed employee, Valhalla was a piece of shit. It wasn't even functional. So they spent three years working on an engine that wasn't even remotely usable, while Bo kept changing his mind about what the game should be at random intervals. Overkill's The Walking Dead flip-flop between a co-op game, to an open world game, to a resource management game, you name it. Every time Bo changed his mind, employees' work went down the drain, all the while the company was leaking money. Developers begged them to swap to a more functional engine, aka Diesel, and Bo finally budged. So they spent another year working on Diesel, and what do you know, Bo changed his mind again, and they started to use Unreal Engine 4. They spent another year with Unreal Engine, and due to this colossal fuck-up from Bo's side with changing the engine and the core of the game at random, game flopped hard and company went bankrupt. Bo blamed Starbreeze employees for not working hard enough, and left the company in ruins after the insider trading incident. Yes, insider trading. <laughs> Don't you love it when your favorite game studio commits a federal crime? And I'm not even getting too deep with Bo. There are things I left out, like how he drove his brother to leave the company, or the Overkill's best girl contest. If I talk about every infringement Jules and Bo made, we would be here all day. Both Bo and Jules fucked off. Starbreeze is in ruins. What should they do? The old CEO of Starbreeze, Mikhail Nemarg, rest in peace, came back to his old position to save Starbreeze from the brink of bankruptcy again. Emphasis on again, because during the Payday 2's development, company was going bankrupt too and he saved the day. It is just history repeating, as you will see. They broke their promise of no more paid DLC, but this time they at least apologized. Knowing that Bo and Jules left, Knowing that the Starbreeze staff was abused during or kills the Walking Dead development and understanding their struggle, the community decided them to give the second chance. Hey, since Jules and Boar are gone, maybe they will address the issues that crop up in the game or just polish up what we already have as if Bo never left. These are not my words. This is a comment left by Nico under this video. I want to get this thing out of the way too since it's been weighing down my conscience. 
This video is a ruse. I made it just to see what kind of response it will get. I want to publicly apologize for playing mind games with my audience, but I wanted to know how people felt about the current situation and directly and honestly asking people wasn't gonna cut it. Honestly asking people wouldn't reach the, reach the people as well as negativity. Still, I'm sorry for playing mind games with you. This was the shittiest thing I have ever did. Nico perfectly summarizes how I personally feel about these last three years. Nothing really changed and the game is somehow worse. I don't want to spend too much time with it, so here's a lightning summary. 1. Denka is now a game designer. Much like Jules, he was QA before his new position and he's incompetent. Denka further ravaged the game with changes no one asked for. Only differentiating fa fact between is the, as far as I know, Denka doesn't have a sugar daddy higher up in the company compared to Jules. 2. Power Creep DLC Most of the newer DLC additions are overpowered compared to what we have, while being more expensive. This was always an issue with this game and rebooting the development didn't change their attitude. 3. Shit Design aka Marshalls, Leech, so on. 4. Newer content is lower quality than what we are used to, or has their own visual identity that doesn't fit into the rest of the game's established art style. 5. New outfit system is riddled with bugs, visual errors, and it is used to kill off the rest of the game's art style to the point that one of their artists left the company for what the game turned into. On the side note, I couldn't find a Discord conversation for this uh, since I since I genuinely forgot which payday to server this, this discussion take place with the artist. If you remember which server it was, let me know through Discord. I don't know how the new name system works for DMs, but my, but my name is Bay1K with lowercase, so feel free to reach me. 6. Minimal care when it comes to bug fixing and taking care of the game's health. Minimal QA to test cause mothers fix their shit anyways. All of this leads to the week that PD2 died. Update 237 and PD2 Payday 3 leaks were the last smidge of falling snow into the snowball, forming an avalanche of realization. Nothing changed at all. Update 237 killed off Linux port with the excuse of engine is too old. They killed off Linux to farm money from Fortnite players. Let me elaborate on this. Instead of setting crossplay between Linux and Windows for two different storefronts, they cut Linux out of the equation because Epic Online services for peer to peer documentation for Linux is lacking. Instead of finding a way around to include them, they just went with the same old excuse of engine limitations. We will get the engine limitations, don't worry. All of this comes with the Epic and Steam crossplay that doesn't work, corrupts player save files alongside other bullshit. That's on top of Payday 3 coming with the same DLC model that people tolerated for years for the hopes of Payday 3, on top of microtransactions coming back. You may say, but it is only cosmetic microtransactions. Well, look at Twin Floor 2 and tell me how that worked out. I supported them to see PD3 and what I see is everything I hated coming back again. And yes, Update 237 broke the game. PD2 was unplayable for 4 weeks straight. Even if you find a lobby that you can connect by a miracle, chances are your save file will get corrupted randomly for no reason because of the social hub feature that uses player's own save file instead of something for its own. Game already supports multiple save files. Settings are st stored separately from the progression already. Just put it into its own file. It took them four weeks to address the bulk of the issues that you update 237 brought to the game. And even then, stuff like save file corruptions are still a thing and the current matchmaking system is a downgrade of what we had. I will elaborate more on this at the later stage of the video. I'm gonna be honest with you. Uncle, Carrot and me all had our exit strategies from PD2 content. We were gonna finish up our current content and go out with a boom. Let people that enjoyed our content enjoy it a bit more. But we can't even do that anymore because the game is literally unplayable. All the while they, all the while they keep lying to us about Linux ports, bringing back their old lies of theirs. That's one of the things I want to address. The lies. Ah, the lies. We wanted a drum magazine for Isma. They said it would require a new animation that the engine doesn't support. Raid World War 2 is also on diesel and that supports different animations. 
Mod, Mods has been doing multiple animations depending on attachments for a while too. We want them to fix their games, they said, engine limitations. We want them to support their platforms like consoles, they said, engine limitations. And now Linux support is cut because of engine limitations. It has never been engine limitations, they're just liars. Do you know why Linux support is cut? It is cut because Epic Online Services for Linux when it comes to peer-to-peer -peer connections is lacking. Instead of finding a way to fix it, they just cut it out, while bragging about the crossplay between Epic and Steam that didn't even work. They dumped Linux in the hopes of Epic Game Store players buying DLCs as a final act of greed. No one cares if you want to milk more people, but at least have the courtesy to do it with grace. Also, I find it kinda hilarious that the engine limitations suddenly disappear when they want to release the game for a different platform to milk more people. This game supports every platform under the sun. Engine is capable of handling other platforms when it comes to making money, but once the money is dried, the engine is no longer capable. If the engine wasn't capable, they wouldn't have begged Bo to switch to Diesel during Overkill's The Walking Dead development. If engine wasn't capable, Raid World War 2 wouldn't have this levels of fucking polish. Just look at this Raid World War 2 footage. There is not a single fucking stutter or technical problem that my eyes can see. It takes less than 35 seconds to load into this game, by the way. And, by the way, and only four people worked on this game. Starberries, for the love of God, stop lying. If you keep doing this, no one will be there when you, when you tell the truth for once. Update 237 was the last drop. The fact that their shareholders started to defend them on Reddit really shows how incompetent they are. I'm not having it anymore. I hope Payday 3 makes a mountain of money, Starbreeze, since that's all you really care for. But I and many others can no longer tolerate your incompetence just for the sake of the game we all loved. You have no respect for your dedicated player base and the game that pays your bills, so you shall get none in return. For the epic players that unknowingly land into the shit show, and for the future Payday 3 players, enjoy your stay as much as you can, but be mindful of the people behind this game. That's the best advice I can give. As for Payday 2 content, it's not gonna return cause whenever I Alt F4 from the game to save on system resources when editing a video, my save file keeps getting corrupted. I have backups, sure, but I am not willing to jump through a billion hoops just to have fun with the process of content creation. Even creating content for this game is unfun thanks to Starbreeze, and that's just an extra bit of insult to injury. Stay safe folks and don't be sad. Just be happy that we had countless hours of fun talking and playing this game. I will be here and continue to make videos, but anything that relates to Payday 2 or Payday 3 will be absent. I can't even run Payday 3 with my system, and it will take time to grab the game to make a proper review of it, which is time I am unwilling to spend even if the game worked on my system. Starberries, you are on your own. Good luck and try not to mess up. <coughs> This is the section I want to bring up the common criticisms towards Starbreeze, Epic Games and the community itself, since everybody is incredibly confused. I'm gonna jump from topic to topic as cohesively as possible, not promising that this section will alleviate the confusion though. I'm just pre-answering some of the comments that, will end, that this video will end up getting. 1. Epic Games ruined Payday 2 Epic Games didn't ruin Payday 2. Bulk of the blame can be put on Starbury staff. Epic Online services for peer-to-peer -peer connections are lacking, that's a fact, but they still went with their matchmaking anyways. Documentation for both Linux and Windows is shoddy at best, and the Epic does indeed let developers use their own matchmaking or APIs in their games. I heard one guy bringing up how GTA 5 and Online didn't function for 3 days when that game went free as a proving point of Epic ruining games. Which is hilarious because 1. GTA Online is a pile of trash, 2. GTA Online and 5 uses Rockstar's own API and servers for matchmaking and has nothing to do with systems that Epic provides to everyone. So it was Rockstar's incompetence, much like how this is how you update 237 is Starbreeze's incompetence. 2. Starbreeze staff is understaffed and couldn't test stuff properly. If that's the case, why change something as fundamental as matchmaking in the hopes of milking ever so slightly more, more bit of money? 
No one really cares about the Power Creep DLC and them being stupid with the changes they made for the game since it is crystal clear from time and time again they don't want to learn, but something as integral as matchmaking, I think it's just a bad, terrible judgement call. Being understaffed isn't an excuse for the game being essentially unplayable when the game was never at this stage at any point of its life. 3. Steam players are just salty about game being free on Epic. Quite the opposite. New players are always welcome, especially in DOCD circles. New players trying to get their DOCD masks is the bread, of bu bread and butter of this community. The storefront, the, the storefront the players uses matters very little. In fact, some of my friends started to play the game when it went free on Steam, like Semper Invicta. If Update 237 matchmaking worked at the slightest bit of capacity, people wouldn't have cared. At launch, there were a ton of problems, ranging from basic features being removed to save file corruptions caused by social hub feature that was coded with a fist even after a month. And even after a month, issues still persist and the overall experience of the game is downgraded. There are multiple problems with the current system, one of which is the connection issues. There are multiple reasons why th these happen, but I only want to touch one of them in this video since that's the one I understand the most. Steam couldn't authenticate the user one is something that always happens in rare situations, but with the current system, it is amplified. The crossplay works like this. The game creates a dummy account for Epic Store on your behalf that has the necessary information to connect Epic Online services. If this account fails to get created on startup, you can no longer join lobbies, no matter how hard you try. I kept running into this before I gave up altogether and uninstalled after two weeks. This is a multiplayer game and I don't want to record solo footage for my content, it's just not in the spirit of things. The new distance filter that is reintroduced after a month is inferior to what we have. Old distance filter worked by ping, so you only saw lobbies that were consistently playable with some exceptions. New filter works by country. Close shows the count lobbies in your country, far shows the group of countries that are handpicked by the devs, and the worldwide is about as useful as spitting into a hurricane. Setting a distance setting isn't gonna guarantee a playable lobby consistently with this system, if you can even find a lobby in the first place. 4. Steam MM. It fixes the game. Players shouldn't be expected to use a launch command to play the game properly. Having two different matchmaking services only divides the player base. We don't need two different matchmaking services, we only need one that works well, like it always did before update 237. Players don't care what, make, what matchmaking service the game uses, but they do care about the exper their experience, and their experience is worsened. Everything about the current system is worse, even if some, even something as simple as distance filter that is reintroduced after a whole fucking month. 5. Starbase will have saved Linux port if it wasn't for the engine limitations. They are outright lying about Linux port, even though they have been bragging about crossplay and crossplay between Epic and Steam. Linux and Windows was always capable of crossplay until update 237. That's because the overall difference in code is around 2.5k lines out of millions. And these code differences are stuff like lack of Discord reach presence for Linux, slight rendering differences aka nothing that really matters. They just manufactured a lie for months to got it out cause Epic Online services for peer-to-peer -peer, peer -peer connections for Linux lacks documentation on how it actually works. Instead of finding a way around that, they just got it out to crossplay option that worked between two different platforms in favor of a crossplay option in the same platform. Yes, storefronts are on the platform. Stop treating it that way. So they did. So they didn't even introduce crossplay. They just removed it to suck up Epic users' money. Six. Did Epic force Starbreeze to use their API instead of Steam's? While that's a possibility, I highly doubt that's the case. For developers, Epic is a straight up better place. They take less cut from sales, their engine works for every platform under the sun, and they provide them with the same services that Steam also provides. 
So I highly doubt that Epic forced them to use their own API for the deal to go through, considering there are tons of games in Epic that doesn't use Epic Online services. Now, I don't want to paint Epic as a fucking divine angel, they are just as evil as any other business, but I have to admit, what they provide for developers are just as good, if not better in some cases than what Steam provides for us. What Steam provides, though, Steam takes the edge when it comes to community created content. I even have my own guides on it. 7. Game is fine and you're all just steering shit for no reason. People unironically say that and I don't know what to say aside from massive cop. 8. This is fine, Payday 3 is coming and no one will play Payday 2 afterwards anyways. People still play Payday the Heist and Payday the Heist is playable unlike Payday 2. There are few bugs that they didn't fix but all that is solved by a single optional mod slash lure hook if you care. Like I said, it is truly optional and the game will work without any issues right out of the gate. 9. Payday 3 will be better and Starbreeze will stop being stupid. That's just naive but we've all been there, I'm not judging you. For Payday 3 they are already bringing their overpriced DLC system alongside microtransactions. If their terrible business model is carried over, it's only a matter of time they carry over all the stupid shit. Even though they are advertising cross-progression between platforms, how is that gonna work with paid DLC guns? Let's say you bought a gun DLC on PC and decided to move your save file to PS5. Are you gonna buy have to buy DLC on PS5 again just to get the luxury of using content you already paid for on one platform? What good does cross-progression brings when you get locked out of a content you already paid for on a different platform? They really should just make cosmetic DLCs and be done with it, but no. Gameplay will be locked behind of hundreds of paywalls because fuck you for wanting a better, non-predatory monetization system. And that's just one thing they advertised. And I have issues with everything I saw about PD3. Considering Starbreeze's track record for keeping promises, I wouldn't hold my breath for anything they promised in the first place. They showed very little and the leaked gameplay footage I hoarded looks lifeless. Weapon firing sounds don't even change when you shoot your gun outside versus inside. Even Payday 2 does this on older maps. Sadly, I don't want to show the leak considering that even mentioning the Payday Girl contest painted a target behind my back. It is, not, it is not even interesting anyways aside from the armor inconsistencies. In the footage I have, armor never regenerated. But every partner says armor will have rem limited regeneration. While I prefer believing my own eyes, maybe they changed it, I don't know. 10. The game is better now. Yeah sure, it is better than what it, what it was a month ago, but it's still not better than what it was two months ago, which is a massive deal. You shouldn't settle for less, you know, you shouldn't settle for mediocrity and sh settle for less. You matter and your experience matters too. So, you know, you know, it's fine if you have like, if you still like the game, you want to play it. But at the same time, why settle for less? I don't know. There is only so much you can snap one person's will before it snaps. That's all I can think of off the top of my head, so for, for further discussions, comments are down there. I want to thank all my fans for the amazing fan arts. Bonus 11 after I heard the always online. So, 11. Game is always online to allow cross progression and cross play. First of all, they didn't promise cross play, just cross progression. Second, forcing always online has nothing to do with either of these in any way. Always Online is there to act as a DRM to keep people from potentially hacking their payday credits instead of buying them. That's it. It's just a DRM forced onto the people to protect their shitty business decisions of putting microtransactions into the game. Anyways, this is it. Bye bye. The video is over now, for real. Well, I guess the whole keep a low profile is now out of the question. On the other hand, even bad publicity is good publicity. And we got what we came for. Well done.